hi and welcome to a new in the mail this time as you can see we have a lot of items to look at and uh, some of them were ordered two or even three months ago but uh, due to the postal service madness that happens every year during holidays they arrived a bit late so now we have a big pile of items to look at but that should be a good thing we're going to start with this uh, HC05 Bluetooth module because you won't believe this but the original order date for this module was October 29th 2015 so if you calculate it took this module roughly a hundred plus days to arrive of course I thought this order is lost in transit and never expected it to arrive anymore but to my surprise it did I wonder what happened, but I guess I'll never find out. I don't even remember exactly why I ordered this module. It was probably for a power supply project that uh, was missing it, or maybe for the uh, dark load project. Uh, but I don't know why I would have uh, gotten the breakout module, because the PCB for the dark load project has a footprint directly for the HCO5 module. So anyway, in today's mailbag, uh, you'll probably notice I won't uh, give uh, too much details on each item because there are a lot of items and I don't want to make the video too long. For our next item, we can tell by the box it came in. This one is sold by someone who actually cares how their product reaches the customer. We have a logo on the box and uh, right here on this uh, business card, looks like the company's name is Tiny Shine or tiny sign I don't know how you would pronounce that and it seems they also provide uh, PCB and PCB assembly services so let's see what we got in here yeah so this one is a Bluetooth audio amplifier board model number is TSA 2110A we also see the same uh, leaf style logo so yeah the seller of this module is probably the uh, actual manufacturer of this module and of course they want their customers to be happy and uh, receive the module in good condition this is a uh, 2x8 watts class D audio amplifier coupled with a Bluetooth module, uh, actually a Bluetooth 4.0 module for input. The amplifier is uh, based on the Texas Instruments TPA 3110D2, is this chip right here. And as you can see, it doesn't need any heatsink because uh, it's a class D efficient amplifier. It can output up to 15 watts per channel from a 16 volt supply, but the seller of the module lists it as a 2x8 watts. The amplifier has all kinds of uh, modern features like uh, speaker protection, short circuit protection, thermal protection, and being a Class D amplifier, like I mentioned, it makes it 90% uh, efficient, so you don't need any heatsink. This thing is going to run cool on its own just by using the ground plane on the PCB as a heatsink. But uh, this thing will get its own separate video where I test and review its uh, capability. So stay subscribed to receive notifications about uh, new videos. Next up, I have this item which arrived in this uh, bubble wrap in a simple, very thin gray envelope like most of the stuff you get from Banggood. Um, I find it very inadequate for such a board and uh, it really doesn't provide enough protection during shipping. For example, as we can see here, these uh, terminals are bent and uh, this might have happened during shipping, but there are also lots and lots of parts that can break and bend dur during shipping. This thing should have been shipped in a, in a carton box. Anyway, it's quite common with these uh, kits shipped from eBay or Banggood. They often lack proper packaging. So you're probably uh, 
some of you probably already recognized what this is. It's a, a 60 watt electronic dummy load and uh, compared to previous previous ones that uh, I showed on um, on video, this one also comes with a small 7 segment display uh, and it costs just $22 shipped. You can use it to test the power supplies, voltage regulators, batteries. Actually, it is advertised as a uh, battery capacity tester. It does uh, maximum 10 amps 30 volts, but limited to 60 watts. It has this um, heatsink plus uh, cooling fan combo. And uh, according to its uh, specification, it has adjustable speed according to temperature. And for that, we can see we have a thermistor right here glued to the heatsink. It does require 12 volts uh, DC input to run, which you can connect uh, through this uh, DC barrel jack uh, connector. And uh, judging by the seal screen on the PCB, it should be able to uh, display volts, amp hour and watt hour, uh, maybe through this uh, selection switch. But I will do a separate video on this product where I will uh, review and uh, discuss the details. In here I have 4 pieces 9 volts lithium rechargeable batteries. These are quite lightweight. In fact, let me just uh, get a scale. It's just 27 grams. And I don't have on hand a, a, nine, a regular alkaline 9 volt battery for comparison. But just by the feel I have when holding them in my hand, I know these are much lighter than a standard alkaline battery. Even though these are uh, much lighter, they have a higher capacity with the added bonus of being rechargeable. For example, a good quality alkaline battery like the Duracell Copper Top at a discharge rate of 100 milliamps should put out about uh, 350 milliamps according to its data sheet. I did run a test on one of these uh, batteries and I was able to get at a discharge rate of 100 milliamps a capacity of roughly 600 milliamp hours. I am quite sure it could also do the uh, rated 650 milliamps but unfortunately the device I used for discharging doesn't allow me to set the cutoff voltage low enough so there was still some charge left in the cell. But now as I have the uh, new dummy load slash battery tester I will use this one and retest these batteries and if you're wondering why I need four of these it's because I have many multimeters in here in the lab and instead of purchasing new batteries every time I can now recharge these whenever they go low there is also a charger from the same manufacturer if you'd like to get that there is a link in the description but I didn't need it as I have many lithium battery chargers around. Next up we have this very small module for lithium cells. It has the charging IC on board and I believe it's this one right here. It's the TPA4056 and it also has protection circuitry for overcharge and overcurrent. And uh, that should be accomplished by these two devices right here. This one is probably a dual MOSFET and right here we have uh, this smaller device which is probably a specialized IC for battery protection. So you have the uh, input on this side on the micro USB port and you can use that to charge your cell through the charging IC. And then you have on this side the uh, battery connection as well as the actual output tabs. These modules are very cheap and you can get them in packs of 10 very cheaply. I will post a link in the description with a selection of uh, different packs of uh, these modules and you can pick with which one uh, will suit your needs better. This is a AAA 900 milliamp hour nickel metal hydrate rechargeable battery with tabs. You can usually find these in various consumer products and I needed one to replace a dead similar battery inside the hair trimmer. The product itself was still okay, but the battery died, so I got a replacement and uh, gave it probably another year or two of life. The battery was $1.50, free shipping on eBay.
Next we have this magnetic work mat. Let me just open the bag so we can uh, get a better look. It also comes with this uh, presumably water-based writing pen. As you can see it has this uh, pattern marked and you can also use the pen to write stuff on it. Let's see how this looks like. Yeah, so it's like a basic uh, water pen that you would use on a regular erasable whiteboard. And the main idea is that you can use this mat when disassembling stuff like a smartphone or tablet. And uh, you place each set of screws inside the square. This way you stay organized so you can easily so you can easily put them back together. And I do have some uh, metallic screws in here that we can use to test how magnetic is this mat. And you can see if you lay the screws with the flat part on the magnetic part, they stick quite well. And if you are, for example, if you're working and you're accidentally uh, bumping the, the mat, the screws won't move from the square where you place them. So you just keep all your screws organized while assembling or disassembling something. So it works quite well and you can see the, the water-based marker just uh, erases no problem. Next item is a brushless motor driver. As you may know, brushless motor needs specialized driving or commutating circuitry and this module does exactly that while providing these uh, connectors for easy access as well as this potentiometer for adjusting the speed. Usually for flexibility this solution is implemented as a microcontroller plus switching FETs for the outputs. But in this case I only see one device on the output so uh, this must be an integrated uh, brushless uh, driver. However, the numbers are uh, rubbed off, so we can't identify this device. This other device placed next to the potentiometer, I'm not sure what it is, but it can't be doing much. I see the analog potentiometer is connected to this device, and then we have a, a single signal going to the driver chip. It could be converting or buffering the voltage from the pot in some way before reaching the driver chip. This thing should work between 5 and 12 volts and up to 1.2 amps. So just for fun, let's connect a brushless motor to see how it works. So earlier I took apart one of these uh, two and a half inch laptop hard drives and uh, I took the electronics board out and uh, I had these uh, four tabs connecting to the motors. I soldered these uh, jumper wires so that I can easily connect them to the driver board. I have marked which one is the common point because um, these motors, uh, these hard drives, brushless motors, they usually have a star. Uh, they usually have a star setup on their coils, so you need to know their common point to connect to the uh, common terminal. So here is our setup: the two and a half inch drive with its brushless motor, I have stuck a piece of uh, captain tape to this uh, platter so that we can see it spinning. I have the brushless motor driver right here, 5 volts DC input from my bench power supply because I believe these uh, two and a half inch drives um, run on 5 volts. And let's try to uh, engage this uh, motor, yeah, so we can see it spinning just fine. Let's slow it down. Yeah, so it appears we can uh, control the speed. And this is what makes uh, this module great. You can use it for some basic tests. You can use it to test brushless motors that you don't know if they work or not. And this is kind of a universal driver. You just hook up the motor and you instantly see if that motor is working or not. Let me just mark the spinning direction. It would appear that the motor was spinning in that direction right now.
let's change the direction jumper and see if we can get it to spin in the other direction yeah right now I have the port on minimum and the motor continues to run that probably means this motor is very very efficient and can run on very small currents so yeah the um, direction selection also works and that's about it for this uh, motor driver a link for this will be in the description below next up I have this uh, soldering iron handle it's for my uh, the 936A clone soldering station you see in all, almost all of my videos because it's uh, always on my bench but it's out of uh, frame right now these have uh, quite uh, crappy heating elements and uh, well I was replacing the tip let me just show you well I was uh, replacing the tip I accidentally cracked the ceramic heating element now it doesn't make a good thermal contact with the outer jacket one way to fix it would be to change the heating element and you can find those on ebay as uh, replacements or you can change the handle completely i ordered both a new handle and some spare heating elements but it seems the handle arrived first so link for this is in the description below while we're in the soldering department i also got uh, these two flux pens uh, they come from from China from eBay these are supposed to be Kester 951 um, these are low solids no clean so perfectly adequate for uh, hobby use or for repair um, these uh, seem to have a date of manufacturing January 2nd 2016 so they're pretty uh, recently they have been manufactured pretty recently they have a shelf life of one year but for hub use of course you will not throw these ones away after one year they are they continue to be fine for hub use i'm not sure if these are actually uh original kester products because i have some uh, kester um flux pens around here and they just seem to the plastics just seem to have a, a better quality so yeah they're most likely fakes but good enough for hobby use link for this will be in the description below if you've seen the video where i try to make my own um, bench test leads you probably um, saw me mention i didn't have enough of these uh, four millimeter banana plugs so i went ahead and uh, at that time i ordered a couple of uh, sets of these uh, banana jacks these are the silicon type ones I like these uh, better than the plasticky ones their quality is reasonable you can't expect uh, too much from them and they also have this uh, hole right here that you can use to interconnect uh, uh, one to another so that doesn't make them uh, very safe for any high voltage usage so I, I'm only using these for um, sub 50 volt voltages but they're they're nice and uh, they can help you make your own uh, bench test leads and uh, if you haven't watched that video where I make my own bench test leads there will be a link uh, right here in the upper um, right side of the screen so click that link and uh, watch the video as well so I will start here with this episode and continue with uh, part 2 in a couple of days as usual thank you for watching a thumbs up always helps and uh, don't forget to subscribe see you next time